Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Welcome to another Glaze Review. In this episode we are testing Cosmic Tea Dust from Amico PC-63. This one's a little bit different because I think this was supposed to be the thing that rivals Tenmoku Tea Dust, which is an example right here. Tenmoku Tea Dust is a very old school glaze in which most potters who know how to make their own glazes have the recipe to over time. I have my own recipe that was handed down to me. There's a Cone 10, there's a Cone 5 version of it, but I think this glaze was meant to kind of rival that glaze that's not on the market. So we're going to be testing this out today. We're going to be testing it out on a brown clay body this bottle right here we're also going to be testing it out on two different white clay bodies these are both b mixed with grog and as an added bonus because you guys started complaining down in the comments below that i never do plates we're also going to be testing it on two different plates I think it's almost necessary to test out glazes on both white and brown clay because they have different makeups and different chemicals that make up the clay. And because of that, sometimes the glaze acts in different ways on different clay bodies. And I need to test out the most common of the two, white and brown. There's one small difference with this glaze though. This glaze specifically says, do not use for spray application. I'm guessing, and I'm just guessing because I don't actually know, that this cosmic tea dust here, much like Tenmoku Gold, has little bits of lithium and little bits of heavy metals in it, as most glazes do, even if they are food safe. A little bit isn't too bad, but like, 6% copper is definitely not food safe, that'll cause leaching. So I don't think they want you spraying it just for that one thing. This leads me to another conversation, which is that you can technically spray all of the Amico glazes. I used to add a little bit of water to them, maybe about this much, shake it around a bit, and then I would put it inside my air sprayer and glaze my pieces as they spin. I think Amico kind of knows that people have done this over time because this bottle has this warning on it that you're not supposed to do it. But like this bottle right here doesn't have that instruction on it. It doesn't say not for spray application anywhere. It just has directions, but the directions don't say the same thing that this bottle says, which is not for spray application anywhere on it. So I think this one has a little bit more lithium or something in it, which is not for spray application. With that being said, I'm gonna open up this fresh bottle in front of you so that you know that I'm not lying when I say we're testing a new glaze. Oh, yeah. Why I open the top, check that out. That's crazy. I've never seen that with another bottle glaze before. Whoa, look at that. But that's crazy. I've never seen that before. I now understand why they say that this is not for spray application. This, um, I don't know what that is, but I would not want it in the air. I think that for this last piece, we're gonna combine it with another Amico glaze because I don't know what this stuff is, but every time I look at it up close, it's super sparkly. Like, check this out. The smart part of my brain says that the brown stuff we were looking at earlier is rutile and that this is some type of dolomite or like silicone carbide. The dumb part of my brain 
goes like, okay, if all of these things are true, and this is dolomite or silicone carbide or whatever, then why it be sparkled like this? Imagine I come home and I have this glitter on my hands. They're like, babe, where, where were you last night? And I'm like, oh yeah, I was glazing pottery. Yeah, sure, that'll, that'll go over real well. Yeah, that'll, that'll, she'll believe that. And I know that these two are the base glaze that we're supposed to be testing, so like, I should leave these alone but I really want to see how this reacts with my Lumos glaze. So I'm going to dip these two in Lumos on the very rim and we're going to see how they come out. Tell me how you think they're going to come out in the comments below because I bet they're going to come out really nice. I don't know what these chemicals are. Even from experience, I have no idea what's going on here. So I'm really excited to see what's up. I think that for this last piece, we're gonna combine it with another Amico glaze. Okay, so let's do one more quick overview before we put these in the kiln. These two are our base color glazes with Lumos on the very top. Cosmic tea dust was the very first layer that I poured on. Then I dipped on some Lumos, some of my handmade glaze. This over here is a red clay body, redstone from Aardvark. This is just the cosmic tea dust by itself. These two plates over here are the same thing pretty much. They're and then I put some of this Amico Celadon snow on it just to layer it, the C-10. I really wanna see what happens when you contrast these two. This is supposed to be super dark and this is supposed to be super light. Although it doesn't really look like a true Celadon, it is kind of matte and opaque. So we're gonna see what it makes. Okay, now let's take a look at our two base glazes for the Cosmic Tea Dust. This is so trippy to me. I know it's kind of difficult to see because the high majority of the glaze body is dark while there's little specks of light in there, but what you're seeing on screen is exactly what I'm seeing. And I'm even trying to get a little more light on there so you can see it, but it really is exactly what it promises. It looks like Cosmic Tea Dust. It's, it looks like a little bit of the galaxy that I stored inside of my pot. Now here's the thing, while I'm pretty happy with the results of the bee mix with grog on it, it came out the same way on this one as well. Let's see if I can get a little bit more light on this to really show you. Wow, that's a little too much light, but it works. You see, this is what it looks like in actual sunlight. That's insane to me. Granted, it essentially looks the same, right? Like this and this, but you can see the sparkle. The other glazes that I've tested don't really do this sparkle effect. The other glazes that I've tested don't really do this sparkle effect, and on top of that, you can really see these little dark red spots. I have no idea what they are, but on B Mix with Grog, it turns out very much like this sparkle effect. And they both essentially came out the same exact way. Like they both have this type of sparkly effect on them. The one thing that I'm confused about is that this is bee mixed with grog, right? So these two are basically the same exact thing. This one over here is a redstone clay body, but it came out way more dark speckly. You see how there's way more dark specks in this one than there is the other one? I don't know if those little dark red specks are an iron concentrated glaze. Is just the iron inside the glaze? is just concentrated iron inside of the glaze and they figured out a way to make it like oil spot red for a lack of a better term but these sparkles are throwing me off this is twilight the glaze <laughs> But you can see what I'm talking about, right? This one here is a red clay body, and this one is white, and this one has way more of that reddish tinge to it than this one does over here. This one looks way more sparkly, as for this one has way more red. Granted, these two plates came out basically the exact same with the exact same clay body and everything but i am very confused as to like why the other brown clay body got way more red in it than the other one did i'm not really sure why that's kind of unusual for me 
but this is a fantastic glaze combination. I don't think in general I really like the cosmic tea dust. It seems a little bit gaudy for me, or at least a little bit too overused. You know, people who put like gold luster on everything. It's just after like a year, it gets kind of gaudy and overused. But as of now, I'm really digging this experimentation. This is a Twilight the Glaze. I'm super curious to see what it would look like on the outside in natural sunlight because the majority of my glazes that I have, like this green glaze right here, like this looks fine as it is in normal sunlight. Even this green glaze that I just, you know, just came up with like last week, this looks okay in the indoors. And when you decide to take light off of it, you know, or block some light, it essentially looks the same. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's no real dimension to it. But this glaze over here, but this glaze over here, this cosmic tea dust, essentially only shines really bright in the sunlight. You know what? Let's take it outside. I, I want to look at it in the sunlight. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is the shiniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow, that's... I actually... This is... This looks like a fourth grade art project now. There's glitter everywhere. Okay, that's enough sunlight for me. Back into the cave now. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I just wanted to do an actual glaze combination. I know a lot of you don't know how to make your own glazes. So because of that, I just wanted to stick two Amico glazes together for once to show you this nice combination. It essentially looks like an oil spot glaze. The only difference is that this is super gaudy to me. I'm gonna give this glaze a Dirty Potter four out of five because it is consistent. It does have versatility in that it comes out a little bit different on darker clay bodies, at least this one time this might have been a garbage clay so it came out better on this and y'all know my pet peeve is getting the glaze out and then being like mm, I, don't, I don't know if that's the real color that you're gonna give me on the bottle and, and i hate that i feel like it's false advertising but this gives you exactly what it says it'll give you oh my god but cosmic tea from amico gives you exactly what it says it will give you on top of the fact that it's just super sparkly i'm only taking one point off because it's my personal aesthetic like it's me it's not you it's me. me. Me and your mom are breaking up. This has nothing to do with you, kiddo. It's not your fault. It's a little bit your fault. It looks super cool and sparkly, and I'm into it. It's an interesting glaze, and it's kind of rare to see in the ceramic art world. I've never made a glaze myself like this, but also, this is kind of remnant of like a fourth grade art project, and it's just not my style. If you're into sparkles, that's fine, but you know, sparkles have kind of like a cuteness factor, and I'm just not one to call ceramic artwork cute instead of artwork you know what i mean not to say artwork can't be cute one of them just has the context of like being little and small and like cute and the other one is like crafting you know what i mean which is fine but it's very remnant of like a fourth grade art project of somebody who got the glue and the sprinkles and went ham with it but who knows maybe you like sparkles maybe maybe you like glitter on everything maybe you want your artwork to look like kesha that's none of my business but thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you enjoy this kind of content or you like me testing these glazes for you, put a comment down below. Let me know what you would like to test next for you. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Make sure to click that like button if you want me to make more. And I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. Stop. What the hell are you talking about?